This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, the War and Peace Report. We're broadcasting live from the U.N. Climate Summit in Bonn, Germany. This is the first climate summit since President Trump vowed to pull the U.S. out of the landmark 2015 Paris Climate Agreement, a process that takes four years. On Monday, there was a revolt here at the U.N. Climate Summit as the Trump administration made its official debut at a forum pushing coal, gas and nuclear power. The panel was the only official appearance by the U.S. delegation during this year's U.N. Climate Summit and included speakers from coal company Peabody Energy, a nuclear engineering firm, and a gas exporter. It also included representatives Vice President Mike Pence's office and Trump's climate advisor David Banks, the White House Special Assistant for International Energy and Environment. On the panel, Banks said he was very accessible to the press, although, well, he has repeatedly refused requests to come on Democracy Now! Yesterday on Democracy Now!, during our interview with former Greenpeace head Kumi Naidu, David Banks lingered just offset, waving to us, but declined to come on the show. However, just after the broadcast, we raced over to David Banks, where a scrum of reporters were questioning him. David Banks, do you believe human beings have anything to do with climate change, in anything to do with the warming of the planet? Oh, so, if, or, so from an administration perspective, I think the president would say that climate is always changing. Do you believe that human beings are involved with climate change? Do I? Why are you so interested in what I... You're the representative I, of the Trump administration here. You're the first person we've been able to speak to here about the Trump administration no, I position. Think, look, I, I, think, I think that... Uh, I, th I think the administration would agree that humans contribute to climate change, right? I think, I think the question, and by the way, this is not... So do you disagree with the president that climate change is a Chinese hoax? <laughs> Look, um, I mean, I work for the president of the United States, and I support the president's decisions, right? I supported the president's decision uh, when it came to withdrawing from the Paris Agreement, right? Um, you know, the, pre the president— uh, So do you believe it's a Chinese hoax? Do I believe it's a Chinese hoax? Climate change. I'm just quoting the president of the United States. Who oh, you work but for. I think you're missing the point of the tweet. Mm. I mean, look— Explain it. Oh, no, the, the point of the tweet was— Again, we talked a little bit about this last night. You know, the president views climate change through the through the lens of you know, or climate change policy through the lens of, you know, what does this do to U.S. manufacturing? What does it do to U.S. competitiveness? Right? And so, you know, and and so, and given his given his focus on trade, right, and the trade imbalance, particularly how U.S. manufacturing has been devastated. You know, since particularly since China entered the WTO, you well, know, what about the fact that uh, climate change sadly has been a bonanza for China because it is now excelling in Chinese renewables that we now buy back in the United States, and the president is holding U.S. manufacturers back from this. Well, Kathleen, no, Har he's Kathleen he's Hartnett White, the environmental back. policy advisor, Kathleen Hartnett White, the environmental policy advisor, said that solar power is uh, parasitic, to quote her. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the, I, I, love, I love these quotes that you're pulling out. No, I mean, look, uh, look, the president, the, the president is not holding back renewables, right? The, the, one, of the, one of the key objectives of the president and, and this administration is to make sure uh, that we truly do pursue an all-the-above approach, right, to make sure that, that all energy sources and forms uh, have as much of a level playing field as possible, right? Well, we believe in competitive markets for energy. I think, uh, but, but your point on China, though, is an interesting point. So when, you, when you're looking at uh, our solar manufacturing sector again, I mean, I was, I was really surprised by how uh, devastating uh, trade has been for our solar manufacturing, right? And the re and look, uh, China's not a market economy. China, if China says, hey, you know, here's a sector of the, of the economy. What about if the U.S. government go gave after? subsidies to wind and power and other renewable technologies in the same way it gives subsidies to the oil industry, to the fossil fuel think, industry? Look, look people, people love to make the comparison. I'm happy to talk about subsidies, but that's kind of an apples to oranges conversation, right? Because oil, if you just look at oil, oil, I think maybe we use, maybe oil accounts for maybe one percentage point of U.S. Power generation, maybe, maybe, and I, I think that's probably right.
But no, I mean, look. And you're pushing for a higher percentage for coal right now. That's what the no, panel. No, no, no. We're not. No, 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 no. I think no. We're not pushing for a higher percentage. Uh, I think if my domestic policy colleagues were here, they would say we just, you know, we want to make sure that we that coal has a level playing field and that it doesn't that it's not facing. You know, uh, the, oh, you know, burdensome regulations. Can you tell me why there weren't representatives of solar and wind um, on the panel yesterday? Just nuclear, gas, and coal. Why this is the U.S. One of the people who was in the audience said, "What is this QVC shopping network? You're selling coal, QVC, gas, we're not selling coal, coal, gas, and nuclear gas, power. Where was so, nuclear where power? was solar what and was wind? What was the conversation about? For a level playing field, where was solar and wind as well? We didn't need to include renewables on the panel because renewables are everywhere in the COP, right? We want to make sure that we have a rational discussion on technology innovation, right, for fossil, and uh, make sure that nuclear has." has a good plug for as well, right, because of the role it plays in climate mitigation, not only in the United States, but across the world. Uh, David Banks, you said that you wouldn't, uh, that you don't disagree with the president uh, when he is a proud climate change denier. How is it that you can go against the consensus of more than 95 percent of the world's scientists? Are you a scientist yourself with different kind of data than the rest of the world has? I am not a scientist, has? but, you know, I'm an economist, and so therefore I understand So these are global, scientists global economy talking about and climate and change. The, Yes. So, so are you saying it's not that you disagree that humans are involved with climate change, you just disagree with the solutions for the problem of the world's seas rising. You actually believe human beings are involved with climate change, but you disagree with how to deal I, with that. I, I think the administration would say that humans contribute to climate change, right? I think the, 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 the real disagreement is, is the, the policy that's That's not what pre President Trump said. They say that well, climate think, change no, is a I hoax. Think, I think the president would say that. I think the president would strongly disagree with the policies that were put together by the previous administration that would have severely harmed the American economy. That's David Banks, the White House Special Assistant for International Energy and Environment. He's Trump's climate advisor. When we come back, we'll get response from the renowned climate scientist, Kevin Anderson. Stay with us.